Hello everybody. Today is serious day in post pro with Kevin Kubota. We're going to talk about watermarking your images in Lightroom and batch processing them. If you guys like Bloody Marys, by the way, check out my blog. I've got a whole section on Bloody Marys from around the world rated for your tasting satisfaction. See you in a minute on post pro. If you're like most photographers, you want to share your images on the web and on Facebook and every other place, you really should be watermarking them. And I've heard so many stories from a lot of photographer friends about their images being taken from Facebook and used elsewhere without their permission and they have no watermark, no link back to their website, no way for anybody to even tell that those stolen images are yours. Now of course, if your images really, really suck, you probably don't want to watermark them because you don't want anybody to know. But I am assuming most of you are pretty darn good and you're going to want to watermark it and take credit, right? So in Lightroom, there's a great new tool. You've probably experimented with it uh, in Lightroom 3 for getting a watermark and making it the right size and transparency. It's really awesome. But uh, a lot of people don't or have problems with creating the right graphic so that it looks good and works on most images once you put it into that watermark. So let's start back in Photoshop and create the great graphic file to be used in Lightroom and then I'll show you where and how to use it in Lightroom as the watermark. So let's go to Photoshop first of all and I'm just going to start a brand new document. So you can go to File, New to do this or Command In and give this document a size. Now for a watermark it's generally going to be used on low resolution images, you know web images, so it doesn't have to be that big. Uh, you're, Probably, if you're going to watermark full-size poster prints, that's a different story. You'd make a bigger water print. You'd probably do that in Photoshop to get better quality. But when you're batching them from Lightroom, especially for your blog, generally your images are not going to be any more than six or 800 pixels on the, on the long end. So your watermark doesn't need to be that big. Now Lightroom will shrink it, so it's better to make it a little bigger because if you make it too small, it has to expand it and you'll get interpolation, which makes it jaggy. So make it a little bigger than you need and it'll be great for every use. So I'll just start with a canvas that's about 1000 pixels on both dimensions. 72 dpi is fine, RGB color, we're making a new document. Just something like that, it's blank. And we're going to put in our logo. I'm assuming you have a logo already and if not you can just use text in which case you don't need to even do this part because you can do that in Lightroom. <clears throat> but I think it's a lot better looking to have a nice little logo on your images uh, as well as your website link, okay? So once you have your blank canvas, you will use the place command. Place in Photoshop will bring an image in, place it on this particular canvas as a smart object. And you should have a logo file. If you haven't done the logo yourself, hopefully your designer did it and they gave you a PDF file of the logo which is the best format to use. So I'll place that PDF file and because it's a PDF in vector graphics I can scale it to whatever size I want and it shouldn't affect the quality. You're like, that's a really odd logo you've got there. Yes, I know, because it's white and it's on a white background. So if I turn off the background layer I can see the transparent areas and my white logo. This is designed to be placed over darker backgrounds. So you kind of have to choose, unless your logo is colored, whether you want it uh, a white over dark backgrounds or a dark to place over light backgrounds. But you can have it both ways. If you create a lighter logo, if you have a lighter logo, you can put a little glow. I put a little glow around it, kind of like a drop shadow, but it's around all the edges. It's just a soft black shadowy glow. And that way, if I place it over something that's already really bright, it'll still show. And if it's over something dark, then the glow just kind of fades into the background and it looks good. So one logo works for just about anything from light to dark. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm just going to throw this background layer away and I'm going to create a new solid color fill layer. Okay. And drag that below my logo. So now I can see what it would look like on dark. All right. When we export this, we're not going to export the background. This is only for us to see what it would look like because what I want to do if I double click on this black swatch, I can now click through the various shades from dark to light 
to see what the logo would look like. So say if you're shooting, you have an image that's all white, what is this logo gonna look like? It's gonna look like that. It's not gonna work, right? Anything from middle gray, mid-tone down, it's gonna look great. So I need to do something so that it will stand out when it's on a lighter background area. So I'm just gonna say okay on that, keep that there. Then on my logo layer, I'm gonna add in a outer glow from my effects menu. And in the outer glow, <clears throat> change the blending mode here to normal. Change the color by clicking this yellow tiny square right here to black. The size determines how soft that glow is. And spread is how far out from the edges. So if you want a darker, pretty firm edge around it and then a glow, that's what the spread will do. So you may want a little bit, maybe one or two percent on the spread, maybe you want none, and just have the size do it. So if you look at it now on this lighter background with that glow, the logo stands out. It's not exactly like your logo, it's a little different, but it still stands out, and that's the main thing, right? Okay, so we'll make a little glow, something about like that. Click OK, and now if I test this on different colored backgrounds, see the darker I go, the glow just kind of gets blended into the background, doesn't really matter, but no matter what, even on pure white, you can read the logo. If I want to, I can add text, and I suggest that you add some text and you can set the text to white as well. Draw it below your logo and put in your website for the text. So, put in kevinkubota.com. You can, let's change this to black so we can see what we're doing. The size, if you click in your size box at the top and just use your up arrows, you can grow it so you can get it to exactly the right size you want. Just keep holding your up arrow on your keyboard. But same with the fonts. If you click in the font box and just use your up or down arrows, it'll actually cycle through all the fonts on your system until you find one you like. You may already have a font, of course, that matches your logo font, in which case you just use that. Center it if you want. Okay. Once you have it where you want, then you place it. Dragging it around. And then I'm going to change it to be uh, white and fill it with the same glow. So make the logo white by clicking on this color patch right at the top here. And then I'll take this outer glow, option, drag that glow to my name, to the text, and just copies the same glow right up there to the name, okay? If you need to, take your move tool, align them, move things around a little bit, get it the way you want. Once it's all good, I'm actually gonna use my crop tool now and just trim off some of that white that I don't need. Trim it down a little bit. All right, so there's my file ready to be placed or ready to be saved for Lightroom, but don't forget to turn off the background so that it's transparent. The checkerboard indicates it's transparent. And then we're gonna save it as a PNG file. So save as, and choose PNG. As the file format, okay. Give it a name and save it. You don't need to interlace it and you're done. Now let's go to Lightroom. So in Lightroom, when you're ready to export your images, if you selected a bunch of images here to export. And let's say we're gonna email these to your blog. Use that preset there, which I'll talk about a little more in a bit. I have a choice here for a watermark and I can choose the watermarks. These are some that I have saved already. I'm gonna go edit watermarks. And in the watermark editor, at the top right here, it says watermark style, choose a graphic. And that brings up the dialog box to let me pick the logo that I just made. 
Okay, there it is. Now in the bottom left corner, you can choose where to put it, the opacity of that logo. So say I want it to be in the bottom right and vertical inset, horizontal inset, the size can be whatever you want. Something like that's kind of nice. Okay, And if you want it semi-transparent, just a little bit so it's a little more subtle, change the opacity here. And you can also step through your images by clicking these arrows up here just to see what it would look like on various images when you export this. Okay, once you like it, go ahead and save it as a new preset. I call it uh, proofs, bottom right, create, and you're done. Now it's ready to be exported and it can properly represent you out there in the world. That's it, tune in next week to Post Pro and we're gonna learn how to batch process, export all this great work we've done on our images and create the perfect proofs quickly and easy using presets and batch processing in Lightroom. So see you next week on Post Pro.